Hello and welcome to the Teach Music 21C podcast series. I'm Merlin Thompson, the creator and founder of Teach Music 21C. It's a professional development program for music studio teachers where we highlight 21st century teaching tools, all with the goal of supporting our students on their journeys as lifelong music makers. And I'm joined today by Connie Bell. How you doing? It's great to be here. Thanks, Connie. It's wonderful to have you here. And I'm just going to jump right in uh, to ask you about your teaching and in particular, what's involved. You know, lots of teachers have questions with this idea of a student choice concert. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience with the student choice concert? Yes, I uh, began just doing teacher led concerts, which I would choose the music, the students would, you know, go forth and play the piece that I chose for them. But I started seeing when they chose the music, they learned it so much faster, so much better. They played it all the time. Their parents never had to ask them to practice. They just did it. And uh, it was so motivating to them because it was what was meaningful to them. And so um, that has really changed my teaching, changed the students, how they um, how they progress. Uh, I, I teach a method, Suzuki method, and I had method books. And I at first thought, okay, we stay here until they get it all done, and then they can play whatever they want. But it doesn't work that way because they want to do, they want to create their own music. They want to show me. They want to bring things they've learned. And um, you can't say as a teacher, which I did before, but when I had my teacher-led glasses on, uh, that, oh, we'll hear that later. Or maybe I'll hear that next week. Now I say, let me hear it right now. I want to see what you've been doing this week. And uh, it's much more motivating. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? And just to be clear, a student-led concert isn't teachers, or a student choice concert, isn't teachers saying, oh, here are three sonatinas, pick whichever sonatina you want to play in the concert, or here are three jazz pieces, here are the, the teachers got on their list, which one of these jazz pieces to learn. It's really turning things over and to the student for them to make those important decisions. Yes, and they will they will sometimes bring things that are a little too difficult, but I have learned to stand back and watch because they'll figure it out. If it's way too hard for them, they, they'll know. But if it's a little hard and they have to stretch, they'll do it. If they really want that piece and their skill level goes way up because they just stretched really hard and learned something that they had no idea they could learn, but they wanted it so bad that they could do it. I had one student, Josh, who um, really wanted to, he was a student sensitive um, student who had high functioning autism, but he, he felt comfortable and safe in the little box of I'll do all the pieces in order. And uh, when I asked him to choose a piece, he said, I can't even think of any. And I said, well, do you play video games? Yeah. I said, is there a music on one of those games? Oh, yeah. So he researched and found some music, brought it back. And he, his mom said, I can't believe how long he's at the piano now. And he wanted those pieces. So there's always a way you can find, even with differences in students, you can find, give them an idea. Do you do this? Do you do that? Where do you hear your music? Um, and they they can choose. They enjoy that. It's amazing, isn't it, Connie? Because, you know, so often I, in talking with teachers uh, and telling them about something like a student choice concert, and they'll say, well, what do I do with those students who mm, don't know what what piece they want to learn? And for me, it's always that opening suggestion. What are we going to do? Where? What are the things? Where can we go? And and where can we find good pieces to pieces that the students are interested in? And then getting them at the level that that particular version of the piece might be as well. So there's a little bit of a journey that's in place there, which is really exciting. And I like to think 
it's part of our journey in terms of getting to know ourselves as musicians. So we get to know the music that we like to play. It's like, I would say it's the, 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 the difference between uh, Elton John, perhaps, and, and Lang Lang, you know, classically trained musician and a pop musician. We would never expect that those two guys would be playing the same thing on a concert. And so it's very similar for our students uh, that, you know, I've got the Lang Langs in my studio. I've got the Elton Johns in my studio as well. Yes, I do too. I, I have had a lot of students who want to play the popular things. And it, it's really interesting how they say, but I want this and this and this on my concert as well. Or I want, I have these in my queue to learn. And usually there, here's a classical one here. And there's a popular one there. And sure. um, there's a jazz one over there. And they just want it all. And they can do it all when the basic foundations have been laid and they've been given this choice, this freedom to choose for many years. Nice. Um, they can do it when they're first beginning. Which piece do you choose? Well, I want to learn to play happy birthday. Okay, let's yeah. do it. You know? <laughs> can you talk somewhat about the impact of the Student Choice Concert on, on the students as a group? So, uh, mm. me, you know, I'm, I'm I'm going to hint in a direction, uh, you know, because students hear the other students playing certain pieces. Can you tell us about the impact of that kind of experience? Yeah, that that has been just an uh, overwhelming positive effect on my students because I usually have a group, kind of a practice, you would say, dress rehearsal without the dress type of thing, um, and have them play their piece for each other for the concert that's coming up. and. Uh, you can, when they come to the lesson several weeks after the concert, I've got my list. I want to play the song that he played. I want to play the song that he played. I want to play the song that she played. And when can I play that piece? So they really get motivated by each other. And um, it, it's, it's priceless, really, as a teacher to watch that kind of, I want to play that too. Let me, where's the music for that? I want to be able to get it. And we have such a, um, ease now to find music. You know, we used to have to drive to the music store and find the piece. And it was only one level. <laughs> and now you can find so many levels. You can change the key if it's too hard on a lot of pieces online before you buy it. And so that has really been helpful for my students to find out where those are, how to access it. We do it at the lesson sometimes. We just go right to the place and say, okay, look, how do you find this? What level are you? You know, are you intermediate, early intermediate? What are you? So it's been great for them to say, I have the tools to find whatever I want. It's really Not really teacher. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it you know, for me, I'm, I'm always thinking with this Teach Music 21C, one of the big, I think, launching statements for me is this whole idea of that we believe music lessons is our opportunity to set students up for this really rewarding and satisfying experience of lifelong music making, not necessarily becoming a professional musician, but someone who um, just, you know, on the occasion they come home from work and want to just chill out at the instrument for a, a given period of time or is making music with their family. And so this whole experience of exploring this kind of repertoire uh, with the teacher and, and finding the way to, to navigate through it really is that sowing that seed for that future of lifelong music exploration. It really does. I've seen it over and over again. And I just to, to share a quick story. I had a student who was on the football team ready to quit piano. He just, ooh, I'm too busy. I don't, I don't really have anything to play. And, um, he, I, he needed a piece for this student choice concert. So we got on the online and we listened to a couple pieces. And he found one that he really liked and he learned it. And he wrote me a note and said, I was ready to quit. Of course, I knew I could tell. <laughs> he said, but now I love piano. And it's because he found something that he felt so motivated to play. And then he got a lot of um, 
attention, good, mm -hmm. positive reward strokes from his friends and family. Wow, look at this piece. And so that's what helps motivate students, things that bring them joy, how they sound. Um, so it's it's worth it. It's, it's the best, one of the best things to add to your studio is that student choice. Well, I hope we've given teachers out there an idea of a way that they can bring something really doable and exciting into their studio to just really do our job in terms of meeting the needs of students. Um, this idea of the own choice concept, the idea of keeping pieces all the time that's, that are connected to students, yeah, it's just really a marvelous way to go. Yeah. It's, it's been a real rewarding thing for my studio. And that might be a good place to wrap things up this today. Um, uh, this has been the Teach Music 21C podcast series. I'm here with Connie Bell, who's a long-term time, time supporter of the Teach Music 21C program. A great colleague. I appreciated her input on many occasions. Um, and I hope we can get her back again to talk more about studio teaching and what's involved. Connie, are you up for coming back on another day? I would, I would be honored to do that. Yes, I'd love to. Thank you. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in today. I'm Merlin Thompson. I've been here with Connie Bell, and we'll be back on another occasion to talk about more studio-related topics. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye-bye.